conceptual people talk Real about talk, it. Life, no Hello, everybody. Dr. Rick Wallace dropping in on you. I hope that everything is going as well as planned, all things considered. Uh, for you who, who you guys who don't know, I reside in Texas, and if you haven't heard, Texas caught a little hell last week uh, due to an unprecedented winter storm that we obviously were not prepared for. Um, there have definitely been some challenges. We are still currently here at the, uh, my family without water due to uh, a pipe having burst and uh, a little water damage, but in comparison to some things that I've seen from family members, friends, and acquaintances, we got off uh, rather easy. Uh, some people, uh, it's going to take months to recover. Uh, we're just, like I said, still without water. Fortunately, obviously, we have power. Uh, that's a good thing. Um, but mostly just keep us lifted. Uh, for everybody who has been reaching out and inquiring about how we are doing, uh, all things considered, we're great. Uh, obviously, there are some inconveniences, and it's not necessarily the most comfortable situation, but it could definitely be worse. Uh, with that saying, you know, again, thank every I thank everyone for uh, your concern. Uh, keep us lifted, and we're going to keep pushing and doing what we need to do. Uh, for our families, but also for the work that we do and that we're passionate about. Okay, moving on. Uh, I want to talk to you about something today. Before I get into that, I want to briefly remind you uh, to show some love for the work that we do in the community. Show your support for the work that we do in the community. Whether it's Black Men Lead, uh, Rite of Passage Initiative, whether it's Restoring Ghetto's Forgotten Daughters, uh, dealing with that, whether it's uh, the research arm of the Odyssey Project, which is so integral in developing uh, these programs and initiatives that we consistently develop uh, to provide ideas for solutions to the many enigmatic problems that we face as a community. It comes from research and understanding the instruments, mechanisms, machinations, and uh, barriers, and so much more that are out there. Also, how our behavior, our natural behavior and responses to the years and years and years of trauma and conditioning that we have endured, how that impacts how we handle and we face and deal with opportunity and threat. And so show some love. There's always going to be a link uh, to a way that you can support the work we do. Also, there is the uh, organization's uh, cash app account as well, whatever way you want to do that. I just want to put that out there. Uh, we are in continuous need of support to continue the work we do. So uh, with that being said, moving forward, I don't plan on taking up a whole lot of time on this, but I definitely felt that was a teaching moment here um, I try not to give idiots too much press, uh, but it's a foregone conclusion with this particular idiot. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and address it because I think it's important to provide the proper context for narratives and to illuminate uh, many things that we see in the press. We give so much validity to the press. We give so much validity to celebrities that when we hear things or we see things, uh, we tend to be moved and convinced by what we hear and see instead of what we have studied and known. And it creates all types of disruption, um, delay, and frustration in the uh, pursued uh, desires or uh, accomplishments that we are seeking to uh, obtain as a people. And I'm talking specifically this morning about Herschel Walker. There's no doubt that Herschel Walker is one of the greatest athletes uh, of his era. Um, a Heisman Trophy winner at the University of Georgia 
uh, a pretty decent professional career, both in the USFL and in the NFL with the Dallas Cowboys. But um, I consistently iterate the fact that being a celebrity, whether it's an athlete, whether it's an entertainer, a movie star, or, or, or a singer, or a rapper, doesn't qualify someone to speak on behalf of the black collective. Uh, being famous does not automatically equip you to discuss with uh, reason, logic, and awareness the current state, plight, and movement of the black people and what we should or should not have and what we deserve and don't deserve. And Holt Herschel Walker has been vocal for some time in his beliefs about where we stand as blacks and what he believes. And he was recently quoted as saying that he doesn't believe that we should get reparations and that slavery was more than a hundred years ago. I think his quote was even off on how many years it was. He said a specific number, which was off, uh, but over a hundred years ago, you know, that same argument that the masses from mainstream often present when we're talking about reparations and we're talking about inequality and we're talking about the wealth gap and we're talking about all of these things. There's this argument, well, slavery was 150 years ago. Relatively speaking through the annals of history and understanding, 150 years is a relatively short period of time. But here's the problem. When we talk about that, I'm going to get to this idiot in a minute, but I want to deal with that specific thing. We've talked about it before. This isn't the first time that I've addressed it. I've addressed it in at least three books, and I've addressed it on numerous in numerous articles and God knows how many videos. But here it is. Um, to sit up and make the argument that slavery was 155 years ago and thereby blacks should not have a complaint about their position, their socio socioeconomic positioning, their political positioning, their positioning within the educational community and social standing based on what happened uh, over 150 years ago and beyond because for the last 155 years, blacks have been free. Well, first and foremost, that is an ignorant statement. It is ignorant of how trauma influences it is ignorant of the fact that while blacks have been considered free th since 1865 that we have constantly been under assault in one form or another that hasn't changed there has never been a time when blacks can say okay we're here and there's no aggression towards us economically academically physically and in so many other ways that has never transpired we have never reached that point where we were uh invited in and given equal footing and opportunity and without threat of harm of physical violence of economic violence of incarceration and so much more so first of all we have to look at it from a trauma perspective both uh from a position of conditioning through social learning experience, meaning that just being in an environment where we're watching other people who have been traumatized behave in a manner reflective of their trauma, we will pick up on those learned behaviors and we will behave as if we have experienced the trauma without ever knowing the cause. It is simply a conditioned behavior. But the worst of it isn't that. We have to deal with multi-generational uh, trauma in the sense that it's being trans uh, is being transmitted epigenetically, that we have epigenetic experiences. First and foremost, it's being passed down through the genes. But more importantly, those who have been traumatized and then uh, procreate now produce a progeny that is more inclined to be traumatized. So when you have when you pass down epigenetic tags to another generation and that trauma is passed down. It doesn't just pass down the genetic predisposition for traumatic behavior. It also opens you up to be more easily traumatized. So in the micro or uh, macro aggressions that you experience as a person, you will in insane be easier, easily, more easily, I guess is the right way of phrasing it, more easily traumatized. Uh, there's studies on um, ACEs 
adverse childhood experiences and the massive impact it has over the course of the child's life well into adulthood on throughout the course of the entire life of the person um as few as four aces aces are adverse childhood experiences as defined by uh several studies uh it's, it's something as simple as divorce divorce traumatizes children uh um abuse physically emotionally psychologically having a parent who's an alcoholic having a parent who's an addict uh dealing with certain things within the school system uh so much more at four aces each one of those count as one ace one point at four aces a child is more likely to develop diabetes three times the more likely to develop diabetes, four times more likely to develop heart disease, 12 times more likely to attempt suicide. And I can go on and on and on. These are studies. This shows that there is an epigenetic influence in environmental experiences. So when you talk about the slavery experience, it didn't stop in 1865. There were aggressions after that. For the first 12 years, the Reconstruction era, which most people tried to gloss over, was actually the South reclaiming its antebellum base in, in, in with the exception of calling it slavery it was it, it was still carried out in the form of sharecropping in the form of convict leasing uh there was still this this ability of whites to victimize and manipulate and capitalize on black labor and so we have to look at that. We have to look at after the first 12 years of Reconstruction, that were the black codes. Black codes did not allow for blacks to own land and build businesses. Uh, we can talk about 70 years of Jim Crow segregation. We can talk about 40 years of red line and urban renewal, benign neglect, gentrification, all of these forms of serial force displacement, which again creates a number of other uh, components that again is an adverse experience that creates an environment of trauma not just psychologically but physiologically as well if you studied my, my my papers or you've read any of my papers on epigenetics you understand the massive impact of environmental influences or in, in, in traumatic experiences what am i getting at here without someone who is actually invested someone who understands the dynamic on an economic level we didn't even deal with the economic level just dealing with the trauma alone there's an issue so we're dealing with the economics and how we've been locked out of that how that has played that the economic gap is widening the wealth gap is widening of uh, between the median wealth gap in between white households and black households is widening and there's a reason for that and we need to discuss and understand that but we also need to understand that it's very 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 disingenuous to demand following on the the heels of a statement made by dr king in the 60s not long before he was assassinated it's very disingenuous to demand that a man pull himself up by his own bootstraps when he doesn't own a pair of boots and that's the type of situation that we've been constantly stuck in we've been told to to, to to just get it together to do better to do better without understanding the undercurrent of lockout in in inequity no opportunity that's specifically set up to benefit one group and uh to the detriment of another group so we have to look at that and then we look at what uh, is being said. See, people like Malcolm said this. Malcolm said that the moment that you make a good point, a statement, they will put some black buffoon in front of you. And this is me paraphrasing. Put some black buffoon in front of you and try to break down or discredit what you said. Well, see, here's the problem with what Herschel Walker is saying. See, the way that it's presented is as if reparations are a handout or a gift to the black community, the descendants of slaves in, in America. And it's not. It's a debt. It is a debt owed for the free labor that our ancestors contributed to the building of this industrial empire an economic empire that became the United States of America. It is a note 
that we are intent on cashing that says you owe us not solely based off the slavery experience, but all of the other things that we have had to endure from the Tuskegee experiment where you purposely uh, kept uh, uh, black men uh, infected with syphilis when you had the cure, to study the pathology of the disease, to sit up and talk about the purposeful and 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 and, and unapproved, uh, well, un, 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 not knowledgeable, black black women not being knowledgeable of them being sterilized, and we can go on and on and on about the aggressions that we have endured long after slavery quote unquote officially ended and we can look at and see the gravity of what has transpired and the importance of leveling the playing field we're not talking about give us a handout and help us up we're talking about pay us what you owe us no one including any celebrity especially Herschel, Herschel Walker has the right to sit up and say we he speaks for the black people, the descendants of slaves, and saying, we don't want it. He doesn't have that right. Now, for whatever reason, if he doesn't want to accept it in whatever way it's extended, that's up to him. But we, as a black people, are demanding that we be paid what's owed to us. That we are no longer going to allow the government to pretend as if it is not indebted to us financially, socially, academically, and that they in that we don't deserve full restitution. We have to stop giving so much credibility to celebrities. You don't have to be a great mind to become famous. You don't have to be a learned student of the history of our people to become famous. You don't have to have a grand understanding of human behavior to become famous. You don't have to understand the dynamics of multi-generational trauma to become famous. You don't have to understand the implications of epigenetics in order to become famous. But you need some sense of uh, knowledge or uh, understanding of this in order to be able to speak um, knowledgeably on what is and what isn't. And on that note, I am going to get off of here. I just had to address that. It, it wouldn't it wouldn't set well with me. And so on that note, I'm going to get off, but also don't forget, show your love, show your support for the work that we're doing. And we're going to continue to push and give everything that we've got. Again, you guys have an unbelievable week. Keep lifting us up here in Texas as we go through our recovery process. And you guys have a great day. I'm out. Hello, everybody. Dr. Rick Wallace here, dropping in with a little special announcement for those who have followed me for any stretch of time you know outside of the businesses that i run like myriad business solutions the visionetics institute odyssey media group i also do a great deal of work inside of the inner city communities uh, in houston dallas and other areas uh, i'm asking now as we push a fundraiser that you support what the odyssey project is doing in the inner cities uh, especially with programs like Black Men Lead, which is a rite of passage uh, initiative, and Restoring Ghetto for, Ghetto's Forgotten Daughters, which is a program focused on helping young girls, but boys as well, suffering from childhood sexual abuse, uh, rape, molestation, domestic abuse, uh, absentee fatherhood, and so many other things. Uh, the information will be in the box. Thank you.
From a conceptual perspective, people talk about it, all of the elements.